right around the corner, it's the Daytona 500. Every other sport culminates their season with their biggest event. We're just coming off the Super Bowl. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs on yet another ring. NASCAR, decidedly different. Our biggest event of the year starts the season. Part of that I love because then you get to celebrate being the Daytona 500 champion all year long. You don't suddenly just disappear. We don't hear from you again for four months. Every time you're introduced that following year, you're a Daytona 500 champion. I think that's one of the things that makes it really special. But over the last few years, few meaning back to the year 2000, we have had a plethora of drivers win the Daytona 500 whose career marks are not all that impressive. And these drivers, and we'll reveal them as we go along, all have less than seven career victories as an individual entity and alexis i'll just take the last three years of winners from daytona ricky stenhouse jr four total victories michael mcdowell i think has three austin sendrick has one and it's a big one and it's it's a big (laughs) one i'm not taking that away but to their point their, their resumes aren't they're they're not lengthy they're not fat no, they certainly are not. And I think that is a little bit of the allure of of this race, in my opinion, or has been over the past decade or so, is that, yes, it's the biggest race on the schedule. It means the most out of any other race that we run. But also, it's the one of the most even playing fields you can have because there is a chance for you to have a huge upset winner. And I think that You know, that on the biggest stage is something that fans really like. Um, And I also think that the competitors go into the Daytona 500 thinking, hey, I could be a Daytona 500 champion. Look at the last three years. Look at some of these other folks that you're going to name on this list. I think that's part of the mystique and what makes Daytona 500 and all the other super speedway races for that matter, but specifically the Daytona 500, you know, so cool and unique. Brad Gilly taking a look at some of the others that have won this race since the year 2000 that don't have double digits on their resumes. Jamie McMurray, seven career wins. Yeah, two of them are really big. He won the Brickyard 400 and the Daytona 500. Austin Dillon, four career wins. Here again, the 600 and the 500. Ward Burton, five wins. He won Daytona. Michael Waltrip kind of messes up the curve here. He won Daytona twice two times within three years is this a good thing that nascar's biggest race can be won by drivers that don't have a huge legacy in the game i do think it's a good thing actually i I think that's what makes it great is that we don't go in here saying hey so and so is going to win and this is going to be their day and what's interesting is a lot of the names that you just mentioned michael waltrip jamie mcmurray a couple for example ricky stenhouse jr in that these are people who their other wins outside of the daytona 500 a lot of them also came on speedway races like daytona talladega and now atlanta it's also the reason why since Denny Hamlin did it in 19 or 2019 and 2020 back to back, we didn't have another back to back Daytona 500 champion. You have to go all the way back to the mid 90s when Sterling Marlin did it in 94, 95. So, look, you don't have many back to back champions. You might have multiple winners of this race, but you've got a variety of winners as well. Jeff, you go back to pre 2000, and we could go to Daytona and sit at the ocean deck and Pick the five drivers that we that realistically had a great shot at winning that race. You knew for a while there it was going to be Kale Yarborough. Dale Earnhardt was always going to run up front. Richard Petty won the thing seven times. The the list of potential winners was pretty small. What happened? What what took place at Daytona that we went from okay, these five guys can win to heck, everybody in the field could win? Rules. And the leveling in the field. I mean, that's the thing right now. NASCAR intervened and started saying, hey, you're going to run a restrictor plate this size. You're going to have to do this with your rear springs. you got to do this with your shocks. That started changing things dramatically. Plus, they cracked down on, on the uh, uh, aerodynamic package, so they got more templates than we've ever seen since the beginning of time. So all these things really restricted and leveled the field. I say restricted, but it made it to where you didn't have that unfair advantage. And you bring up, you know, a guy like Dale Earnhardt, he ran extremely well at Daytona with the exception for the 500. Yeah, he could lead it, but he couldn't win it. 20 years it took him to get to victory lane. Darrell Waltrip, 17 years. 
So even though some guys made it look easy, this racetrack can be challenging. In recent years, I think what you saw was NASCAR intervening and giving these other guys, like a Michael McDowell, great race car driver, known for his road course prowess, give him a level playing field, and all of a sudden he can win. You know, it's kind of funny when you think about the Daytona 500 and, and how even the playing field is and, and how anybody can win, but also how hard it is to win. Like, I don't want that to be lost in this conversation that it's not a hard race to win. Look at Tony Stewart. You know what I mean? Look at what about it, Rusty was. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about all the drivers who have tried and tried and tried and never been able to grab, you know, that, that Daytona 500 championship Um you know, moniker because it is, it is hard to win. It is. And, and again, you got to have not only a great race car, but you've got to have luck folks. I know people want to hear it, but you got to have luck and, and, and it's, it's a sad, but yet it's a good thing about our sport. Yeah. Brad Gilly, anybody out of the guys that will start, I say guys, cause I don't believe there will be any female drivers this year that could, surprise us I, I guess it's not a surprise anymore after the last three years is there an unlikely name in that starting lineup at daytona that could come out of there with the ring i think if you're truly looking at unlikely then i would maybe take one of the rookie drivers from josh barry to carson host of art zane smith it's 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 not unheard of that we see a rookie driver let's look at trevor bain uh austin and Cendric. austin Cindric most recently uh who actually won the Daytona 500, but I would say those would be the most unlikely. I think there are people who haven't won a race or who haven't won a Daytona 500, like LaJoy and Bubba Wallace and Ryan Blaney, that we might go, hey, they could do it, but I wouldn't call them as unlikely as I would any of the rookie drivers. And for purpose of conversation, all those drivers that we talked about with under seven wins, Austin Sendrick, his only win, Michael McDowell, he's won a couple of times before, Dylan with four wins, Trevor Bain with just the single win, Stenhouse with four, Jamie McMurray with seven, Ward Burton with five. I actually thought Ward had won more than that, and Michael Waltrip with four. Some, anybody pop into your head, Jeff, that you could see, okay, I would not be shocked if Driver X, that doesn't have a lot of wins, comes away with a W. I'm going to go with John Hunter Nemechek. I feel like that organization is is threatening. I think the fact that they've realigned and got some things going on over there, and I think he's got the kind of talent and the feel for a race car. It's just, this is a prime place for him to come in and really surprise people. You know, it'll be interesting to see how the Toyotas run at Daytona now that they have more Toyotas. That's always been something that that commentators and pundits have talked about. Well, the Toyotas don't have many people to pair right. with. Now they have, you know, the addition of Legacy Motor Club. I'm going to say, and I don't know if it would be a shock because I think he does really great um, on super speedway races, but he would fit the under 10 wins that you're talking about, and that's Bubba Wallace. I think he absolutely could go to victory lane. I'll go one better. I don't think it's a Toyota thing because I think when you take a look, the numbers were not there when Denny Hamlin won three, especially the back-to-back. -back. I mean, they're still the same small number. I think right now it makes it more of a threat than ever before that it could be a Toyota. All right, so big drivers that we mentioned in passing that never won the Daytona 500. Mark Martin came within about two feet of winning. Less than that. But he was denied that opportunity. <laughs> Tony Stewart raced in terrible luck. I think Rusty Wallace did more laps upside down at Daytona than he did all four wheels on the ground. It just seemed like no, every year right. he went down there, it was spectacular crash yeah. time. He was he was the victim, and, and that was the sad part about it was everybody remembers the big crashes that, that he had there rather than the special wins. I mean, for whatever reason, it was a racetrack that he struggled with. So we'll see how this shapes out. Uh, Brad, we're going to save the Kyle Busch chatter because that's coming <laughs> up. I know. I mean, that, he's he's the guy I feel like. There's so much attention focused on Kyle Busch heading into Daytona. Mm -hmm. This will be his 20th shot at winning the Great American Race. 